And then the way that this joint capsule is, so it's not just a solid sleeve that covers the whole knee like this. It doesn't just cover over the whole thing. It covers all the way around the front, but then on the back it dips in and it doesn't include the cruciates. Okay, so when you talk about ligaments, you talk about intracapsular and extracapsular and intraarticular and extraarticular. So if we say intraarticular, what is that? What do you think that's going to mean? Inside of the articulation, no. Inside of the joint. And extraarticular is going to be outside of the joint. So intracapsular is going to be inside the capsule and then extra capsule is going to be outside of the capsule. Okay, so if you look at the cruciate ligaments, are they inside of the joint? Are they interarticular? Yes. 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 Are they intracapsular? No. No. So they would be called what? Extra capsule. So then let's look at the medial collateral and the lateral collateral. Are they inside of the articulation? No. No. So they're extra articular. I mean, uh, extra capsular. Oh, wait a minute. Is that right first time? Extraarticular. Are they inside of the joint capsule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're intracapsular, but they're extraarticular. Okay. It's kind of just semantics, but you want to understand the difference. Okay. So then the other joint that's involved in the knee is the proximal tibiofibular joint, or tib fib joint. Okay. It doesn't really have the same type of articulation where you have cartilage and you have the knee moving back and forth, but there is a little bit of motion that occurs here. And it also, usually if it's moving at this end, it's going to involve movement at the other end of it, the distal part. Uh, so a lot of times things that go on in the ankle, you have, if you have an injury in the ankle or the ankle sprain where it's affecting the <coughs> fibula on the distal part, it can affect the fibula on the proximal part. So if this joint gets locked up and it's hypomobile, that can create some problems. All right, so then in this area here, you're going to have the meniscus. So on one side it looks more like a C, which is on the medial side. So usually remember it as M C L O. Okay? So the medial meniscus is more of a C shape and the lateral meniscus is more of an L shape. And then these are the horns right here. So you have anterior horn and the posterior horn on both of them. Okay? And then this actually would follow, it should be up here actually. You know, it should follow the surface of the, the contours of the tibia more. And then this would follow more like that. Basically, it follows, this, it follows the contours of the tibia. Okay? So the outside edge of the tibia and the meniscus are pretty much in line with each other. Because you have these fibers that anchor it down on the outside. Okay? So it's called the coronary ligament. So the coronary ligament attaches the meniscus around the periphery. Okay? So, the, and that's the only place that the meniscus is actually attached to the bone. So where do you think, if there's any blood vessels that go to the meniscus, where are they going to be? Yeah. Around the outside. Because that's where it's connected. So the blood vessels that go to the meniscus are going to be around the outside there. Okay. So which part of the meniscus is going to have more vascularity to it? The outside perimeter of it or the in, inner surface? The outside of it. Okay. So this inner two-thirds of it is not going to have any vascularity to it. Remember when we were talking about cartilage before, cartilage 
there's not there's no blood vessels that go through the cartilage. Bone has blood vessels that go through the bone. The cartilage is a more of a hard, solid surface. It's a lot of uh, matrix and not very many cells. So there's no room in there for blood vessels. So the meniscus is going to get its nutrition from around the outer third of the meniscus where, the, where it attaches to the coronary ligaments where it has blood vessels going to it. Okay? And then this inner portion of it is going to get its nutrition from the synovial fluid. Okay, so the synovial fluid is getting uh, created and broken down and, and recirculated. So the meniscus is going to get some of its nutrition from the synovial fluid. Okay. Another thing that the meniscus does is it keeps the joint capsule from getting stuck in there. You know, if there was a gap in there, the capsule might, might suck into it and get, a, get caught. You know, might, a fold might get stuck in there, but the meniscus pushes it out. Okay. And then the meniscus is also going to provide lubrication. Because the way that cartilage is structured is it's not just, it looks like it's a flat, solid surface like that, where you have two, two pieces of cartilage articulating with each other. But what it actually has is little tiny little crevices that fluid sits into it. So it's kind of like a sponge. It's got synovial fluid in it, and when you compress on it, that synovial fluid can come out and lubricate the joint. Okay. And then the other thing we'll talk about is Anybody heard of in the knee have what's called a screw home mechanism? Anybody heard of that? Okay, let me show you this other picture. Now, on here, so this, again, we're looking down on the tibia, okay? Here's the articular surface on the medial side, and here's the articular surface on the lateral side. Which one is longer A to P? <coughs> yeah. So we're looking at this dimension from here to here <coughs> versus from here to here. Okay. So on this side of the knee, there's a longer articular surface compared to the lateral side. So when that comes into play, it's what's called the screw home mechanism, is as the knee extends like that, the last little bit, it externally rotates like that because there's more travel on the medial side. Okay. So when the, this is the femur and the tibia is coming up like this, on the, on the medial side, it's going to extend a little bit more, so it's going to externally rotate. So as your knee comes up like that, the last little bit of it is that screw home mechanism. So that tibia is just going to go, going to do a little bit of external rotation, and that kind of locks the knee in place. So that's the screw home mechanism. Right? So a lot of times in orthopedics or physical therapy or something like that, you talk about the screw home mechanism of the knee. So that's what that is. And then when the knee is locked out into full extension, the uh, popliteus muscle is going to pull it back just to unlock that screw home mechanism, to pull it into a little bit more internal rotation as it starts to flex again. Okay, anybody have any questions on that? Which muscle does that? The pop lydias. It's a small muscle on the back of the knee. So also the meniscus doesn't really have any pain sensitive structures in it. Okay? So you're not really going to have pain from the actual tearing in the in the car in the meniscus. Talk about the difference between the medial meniscus and the lat—I mean, uh, the medial meniscus in relation to the medial collateral ligament versus the lateral collateral. And we'll talk more about the ligaments <coughs> in a bit. But which one of these collateral ligaments is closer to the meniscus? Which one is the other? Medial, because you got a gap right in here. Actually, there's usually a little bursa underneath here. So the deep fibers of the medial collateral ligament are attached to the medial meniscus. Okay. So somebody probably has, a, the, if they're doing a case study today, does anybody have this ter terrible triad of the knee? So I won't talk too much about that now, and we'll go over it later. <laughs>